You've heard us say many times on the channel that it's what you do with the gear that counts, but you do still need some gear to make those photos and videos. On the table here, I have a spectacular array of kit that we've used over the years, in some cases for years and years. So I've got lots of feedback for you to hopefully inform your own purchasing decisions, figure out your needs and your wants, particularly from a travel perspective where you need that balance of quality and functionality, but also lightweight. Everything here, we get into this backpack for our adventures. I'm just back from Iceland. If you're hiking, you don't want to be carrying too much. It gets heavy and it gets sore pretty quickly. Let's talk about it now. What has been super useful have been these clips that you can put on the backpack straps and they allow you to mount your camera onto the backpack strap. It's really, really cool. I've got two here. One is from Ulanzi, although it says Falcam on it, or Falcam or something like that. And the other one is from Peak Design. This is heavy and this is awkward. And anything that encourages you to get this camera out and use it is a good thing. So these backpack straps have been incredible. Used them for the first time in Iceland there. Absolutely love the functionality of that. I'm mindful that not all of you will need to have or carry all of these things, but just so you know, I do carry all of these things. So you can pick and choose which items are interesting for you. This tripod has been a little bit of a revelation. It's a travel tripod, again, from Ulanzi. And I have to say, it's not that light, it's a solid lump, and you can get cheapo lightweight tripods that, you know, are lighter than this probably, also quite small, but they certainly aren't going to stand the test of time. This thing's nice carbon fiber legs, which keeps the weight down a little bit. This super nice swivel head joint here, and ultimately the key selling point of this is its size. I don't even need to strap this to the outside of the backpack, it actually yeah, easily fits in the backpack. I've got a few essentials on the table that I want to bring to your attention. Power banks absolutely depend on these things. You can put a USB cable from here to any device that you want to charge and keep your gear charged on the go. Now, let's say you're running a really lightweight setup with a Mini 3 Pro, for example, you only have one battery. You don't have the Fly More kit that I have here. You do your flight, you use up half the battery. You can then plug this in with your USB-C cable, charge on the go while the Mini 3 Pro is in your backpack. You go for another half hour hike, 45 minute hike to your next location. By the time you get there, your battery is almost charged up again, maybe it's fully charged. This keeps you going. These aren't expensive. This costs £20, $20, something like that. It depends on the type that you get. Batteries for DJI drones are expensive. These can be real lifesavers. Let's talk about drones. You've got to have a drone for your adventures. Now, the obvious choice for carrying a drone around would be a Mini 3 Pro. Great price, great functionality. Love this drone, but if this had been the only drone that I took to Iceland, it would have been a disaster. There's no way it would have had the power to deal with the winds in that environment. Thank goodness Alina persuaded me to take the Mavic 3. Now, obviously the Mavic 3 is a lot more expensive. This has always been a bit of a, a tough sell, I have to say, given the pricing of the Mavic 3. Fortunately, DJI came out with the Mavic 3 Classic. Uh, two of the guys on our Iceland trip actually purchased Mavic 3 Classics from the DJI store in Reykjavik. And it's a great drone, a great price. You don't get the telecamera, but you get the enormous battery life, the omnidirectional obstacle avoidance, and the power. The Mini 3 Pro gets the job done 90% of the time. You have to know that, it really does. It's incredible. But in more extreme cases, you can get this up. And in the Scottish Highlands, there were many times where I took this up when I couldn't possibly have taken the Mini 3 Pro up. But that's, of course, a decision for you to make. 
ND filter is an essential part of your filmmaking kit if you want to get your shutter speed down to double the frame rate so you can get the motion blur the eyes accustomed to seeing when watching cinematic footage. We strongly recommend them, although it's a little bit of a nuanced topic that we won't get into here. I'd still say though, an essential purchase. Freewell, thank you guys. They've been sending us products for a long time. Massive shout out to Freewell. The quality of their ND filters is as good as you could hope for. Affordable, gets the job done. Link in the description below to Freewell's ND filters. Coming back to the camera, this is the Panasonic GH5 that we use, have done since it came out about five years ago. Nothing bad to say about this camera. We had GH4s before it. They since came out with the Panasonic GH6. The battery lasts forever. This can be used in hot and cold temperatures. Never overheats. The picture is sharp as can be. Because it's a micro four thirds system, the lenses are small and light. The go-to lens that we use on almost everything is the 15 millimeter f 1.7 that's filming me now. So on a full frame equivalent basis, we're talking about 30 millimeter field of view. And if we're thinking about shallow depth of field, that equates to a 3.4, which is absolutely plenty for any kind of product close-ups. It's plenty for your portraits or vlogging. With a 15 millimeter or 30 millimeter field of view, it's just, uh, wide enough for you to vlog with it and still get some nice shallow depth of field in the background there. Absolutely in love with this camera. We keep looking at all these Sonys and whatnot. Oh, we should get a new Sony, blah, blah, blah. Just can't justify it. Added to that, the lenses are big and heavy, full frame cameras. Just cannot justify it. This will be with us for a little while yet. Speaking of things that have been with us for a little while, this Rode VideoMic Pro, if I'm not mistaken, we've had this since we started filming weddings, Pro, best part of 10 years ago. Absolutely fantastic for, well, your microphone requirements, certainly for vlogging, you can point it that way. You can point it that way. Excellent build quality, big fan of Rode products. So that's good for your on-camera audio. As for your off-camera audio, a product that we could not live without, if I can just find it on the table now, is the DJI mic. The reason we love it so much, internal recording on the transmitters. So these are just used as independent sound recorders, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm recording into this little hard drive that's on this unit. Now that's supposed to serve as a backup. What technically would normally happen is this transmits to the camera, the camera has this receiver unit sitting on top of it and the audio channel just goes straight into the SD card. We do that as well, but this normally becomes my primary source of audio because if we're out and about vlogging or if I'm up a mountain or something like that, I'll just clip it straight onto my jumper or jacket and just record straight in there, boom good to go. Just while we're on the topic, we extensively tested about eight lavalier microphones with the DJI microphone system. Two strong recommendations came out on top. The Shure MVL clip-on microphone if you're looking for a lav system. So lavalier, it comes up your jumper, maybe clips here a little bit more discreet and then you can plug it into here. This one is great, super high build quality, metal construction, really, really nice. Definitely recommend that one. That's probably our top pick, but a nicer, slightly cheaper one that gives this really rich, warm sound, which I like. I like that kind of podcasty sound, like someone's talking really close to the microphone, is this Power DeWise. It's a bit cheaper, comes with loads of extras, so we've got two good options there. On the table here, we have a selection of action cameras. I love them, they're small and light, and they do give you perspectives that are otherwise quite difficult to achieve with traditional cameras, particularly on the 360 front. This is the X3 from Insta360. We've been getting some good, fun results from this. I'll put some shots up from the recent Iceland trip for you to see. Big fan of these. Now we do do action kind of stuff, but one of the main uses that I have for action cameras is a small way of getting a really wide angle field of view, which is not something I typically do, but I do love it for time lapses and landscapes. So the clouds all rushing by, it looks great on a wide angle. Now this is the wide angle lens that we have for the Panasonic GH5 that weighs about 500 grams or something. It's also very expensive, double the price of an action camera and it's big. So we're talking about portability and efficiency here and saving the legs. 
So if you don't have to carry that around, it's a good thing. So I do love the action cameras added to that. You can mount them to the outside of a car easily and all that kind of stuff and not worry too much that they're going to get broken. If you're out on your adventures, you need a way of backing up your footage. Storing your best ever drone shots in the air is not the best idea. So you need a whole selection of micro SD cards in all likelihood for these various cameras. So buy yourself a whole selection of micro SD cards and also get yourself one of these little adapters if you need it for your computer to be able to transfer directly to the computer. Get yourself a little case. So we've got a very well-worn, well-used case here with a bit of duct tape on it, but you can store your cards safely da, 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 and make sure that one of your most precious assets, which is your content or your footage or your photos, doesn't get lost. As for backing up that footage onto your computer, if you have a laptop with you, make a copy onto your laptop, but I would strongly recommend you get an external hard drive. And since we're talking about traveling and being out and about, one with no moving parts is definitely recommended. These are solid state hard drives. Absolutely love, love, lovelies. These, they are, of course, more expensive than your traditional hard drive. That's a traditional hard drive there. Also, made by Western Digital and fantastic, you know, cheaper, get a lot more storage on one of those, but there's moving parts in that. So drop it and you could smash it and lose all the data that's on it. These are great for the office because they are a much cheaper way of getting terabytes of storage. But when you're out and about, solid state hard drives are the way forward. If you wanted to do away with the need to lug around a tripod, I've got some other mounting options here that we use extensively and they're quite small. The first here is this little ball head kind of tripod thing from Manfrotto. Push that in and that rotates there. Now you can put your camera, whatever it happens to be, action camera or even a full camera like this, just screw it to the bottom. Perfect. You've got something to sit the camera on and you can also change the angle of that ball head there. That's really cool. Now we can take this to the next level with the Insta360 invisible selfie stick, screw that on there. And then we have a small, but fairly stable tripod. Let's take it to the next level. Mobile filmmaking, something that we really enjoy the process of. Get yourself one of these Woo Hoto <laughs> mounts. There we go, that screws on the top. Da, 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 da. And now your mobile filmmaking setup is good to go. Phone goes up here. This is all metal construction. Again, we've had a couple of these little phone mounts before. Definitely splash out and get a decent one. And there you go. There's my little monitor so I can see what's filming us now. I think I've covered pretty much everything. I'm just sharing our experience and my experience in particular of having to lug all this stuff around very often on solo adventures and having wildly ambitious and optimistic plans of what I'm going to achieve, as I say, often by myself and, you know, sometimes finding that I've taken far too much stuff. I think the one thing I need to get is a specific backpack that opens from the front. That will make my life a little bit easier instead of rummaging around, trying to get to the bottom of a backpack and kind of slightly carelessly just dropping drones into it and all that kind of stuff. It's great fun. I'm not a gear guy, but I have to say it's quite fun just having it all laid out on the table here, playing around. A pleasure to chat to you. Check out the links in the description to all of this stuff. Stuff. You might find there's some good deals depending on when you watch this video and we will see you next time.